Hi, I'm Rob from Hopseating.com. Thanks for joining me for my um, GBBF 2013 video. This is a little intro, I didn't really get a chance to do a, much of an intro um, at the venue as um, I wasn't allowed to use my tripod. I was told I'd need an escort. I didn't really need an escort, did I? But, so I just want to warn you, all, most of the footage, well all the footage is handheld. So probably not the kind of best quality ever. On top of that, please go over uh, to Terry Kay's uh, videos on over at Beer Goggles Reviews. I did about six, seven uh, reviews with um, collab reviews with Terry. We had a lot of fun. Is and handheld, so it's definitely go over and watch theirs. If you if you're reading um, my kind of GBBF, GBBF blog, I'll put links to a few of his stuff on there. Regardless, so coming up next is the probably the first I think like six or seven beers, maybe a few more. Uh, that I tasted the GBBF, just spliced together, just a nice, quick little tasting note. It's giving you my opinions on the beers, and I'll see you afterwards, and I'll show you all the bottles I picked up at uh, Beer Some Frontiers. Anyway, so I'll see you in a minute. Cheers. Hi, I'm Rob from Popzine.com. Join me at the uh, Great British Beer Festival 2013. First beer of the day. In front of the Thwaites stand, I've got half of their Little Beauty, which is a, uh, I think, 4.2% ABV. Um, Gold nail, hops with uh, primarily other mountain Australian hops. Personally, I'm getting a lot of that kind of galaxy flavour. It's quite punchy, quite chewy, resinous kind of hops. More on the kind of grapefruit side of things, really. Sadly, it's all going to be handheld today as um, the stewards, Nazis, um, told me that I could. I, had, I needed an escort if I, if I used my tripod, so. But yeah, quite a punchy one to start with, but. Very drinkable. I've had a really long, hot walk to the venue, so this is going to go down in no time. So I'll see you in a minute. Next beer, I'm at um, Bits on Frontiers at the American Bar. Got a uh, half of Everyday Junglist American Pale Ale from DC Brow, 5.5. It's decent. I mean, it's definitely got quite a lot of hot bitterness in there. Definitely on that um, more kind of burnt ginger, grapefruit, lemon peel. It's decent, but nothing special. See you, see you next beer. So next beer, we've got um, Matuska from um, Czech Republic. Polo Galaxy. Probably, it's 5.5%. Probably, I guess they call it American Pale Ale. Very nice, actually. More on the kind of grapefruit, kind of Jaffa orange, kind of quite pithy orange. Good amount of kind of burnt caramel going on. Not finishing too dry actually, considering it is quite hoppy. Nice stuff actually. Definitely check this one out. See you in the next beer. Next beer, another American one. It's um, Sierra Nevada's uh, Ovila Saison with mandarin and peppercorns. I think it's about 7.2. It's nice. It's, on the aroma, you do get a lot of um, a lot of mandarins. Maybe a hint of the peppercorn, not a load, but it is. I was just saying to some friends, it's, accept it's acceptably saison -y. I'm a bit bored of saison, but it's got a nice kind of saison yeast character. What you'd expect, slight kind of banana. Not loads, but a good amount. Flavour-wise, you do get the mandarin in the kind of sweetness. I'd say it's more on the kind of, um, kind of tinned kind of mandarin, nectarines, that kind of thing. It's nice, and somebody who's not a massive fan of saison, it's pretty good. Anyway, see you next beer. Uh, next beer is um, St. Austell's Big Job. So they're kind of a, they're kind of premium uh, size version of a uh, proper job. Weirdly, virtually everybody who's uh, drinking at the, the um, St. Austell bar are, are, appear to be staff. They're even wearing these stupid hats or wearing kind of like purple tribute um, polo shirts, which you can see over there. But this is absolutely storming. It's a lovely, lovely beer. I think um, proper job is primarily kind of um, uh, Centennial and Cascade, I think. Well, that's lovely. I'm not sure the ABV because I didn't. I think it's maybe like 6.5 or something like that. Good, 
kind of like balanced malt, malt character, a nice amount of um, kind of dark biscuity malt. Big kind of grapefruit, more on the kind of like lemony side of things. Really good actually. One of the best beers so far. So a big job. Nice stuff. Next beer is Clown Shoes Galactic Pale Ale. I've stopped looking at ABVs now, they're usually 5.5. It's really good actually. Aroma's fantastic. It's all kind of sweet orange. Actually no, really kind of like pithy, kind of um, juicy orange. Really fragrant, lovely smelling beer. As far as the taste goes, bitter, pithy, pithy orange, bit of grapefruit, bit of lemon. But really balanced as well. So it is very bitter but very balanced. It might have just hit a big job. Mm. Very American, a bit more American than something like the uh, than this is, than the uh, uh, big job. Nice stuff. Okay, blogging on the move this time, drinking and walking. As this is a half of. The beer of the festival for me, you know, for a lot of people last year. Uh, Thwaites' 13 Guns. It tasted fantastic this year as well. I had it on, I had it on draft uh, in, um, a couple of months ago, a bit mediocre, but this is tasting fantastic. Just had a nice chat with uh, one of the guys from Thwaites as well. I mean, they're doing some really good beer. I mean, it's. Um, it's a big, it's a sizable regional brewery, but they're doing some fantastic stuff. And this is an absolute winner. Loads of kind of like Cascade, that Centennial, those kind of like hoppy flavours. Big, grapefruity, kind of like punchy lemon kind of flavours. Absolute winner. I don't think it ever performs as well outside of this venue, but it's a lovely beer. Anyway. See you in the next beer. Cheers. Next beer, back at the um, Czech and German bar. Coasters, 4.1% catfish. Can like sit somewhere between uh, like a American pale ale and a lager. It's nice, refreshing. And also, at this point of the day, nice and cool. Kind of like quite a quite a prickly grapefruit, maybe kiwi thing going on there. Dry and kind of clean like a lager, but kind of tastes like a pale ale. One of the better breweries from the Czech Republic, one of the ones that gets around, and one, one, one of the ones that um, you kind of see at GBBF. But yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice drop. Look at now I'm not here. Look at how it is, it's me and Terry Kay. And believe it or not, we are drinking. Smells and bums, Wells and Youngs. Russian Imperial Stair. I'm not Seven, here. Seven percent ABV. I'm not here. He's not here. He's not here. It's just me. Do you know what? Listen, I've got to say, he has done something nasty to me. Imagine, you folks out there, imagine waking up with a lady boy in the bed with you and knowing that you'd enjoyed it the night before. <laughs> well, that is, now, Wells and Young's beers, I hate them. I hate the fact that they put colouring in, sugars in, corn and wheat, and uh, corn and maize and everything else, and, and just do everything against the, hot, the old recipes. There was like the, you know, West recipes, there was director's recipes and things like that. And they just, uh, I would need to say something bad, but ravage those recipes. And it's made me drink a beer that I've enjoyed by Wells and Youngs. Oh, lovely. I ain't talked to him ever again. Hey. So, so this is 10% Imperial set, Russian Imperial set. Wells and Youngs. Do you know what? It's a quite a nice beer. Tell us what we're getting. It's quite a nice beer. We're getting burnt liver. You know, kind of fresh new liver, but a slightly burnt liver. We're getting burnt toast. We're getting black 
stroke molasses again, treacles and things like that. You're getting a lovely bitterness that counteracts and balances it. I bloody, I nearly said it's something naughty, I bloody, bloody hate it. I hate it because I kind of suspect they probably put dye in it and stuff and flavourings and God knows what else. I don't even want to talk about it, but it is lovely. It's like it a really dirty, dirty treat. Yeah. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Ladyboy. But I yeah. woke up with a ladyboy, that's what it is. Just just a lot closer. Just take it from me. Don't worry, don't worry. It's, no, it's, no. it's, <laughs> it's no. general appearance. And you will enjoy it. This is how it works out. It's a, it's a lovely Imperial style and change hands for us. Uh, it's not, it's a ladyboy. It's, it's a dirty, dirty ladyboy in there. Yeah. It's, it's a tasty body imperial style lots of kind of like that's terrible it's a lady boy with Plastic. big big boobs and things and everything else it's a lady boy she's a dirty trick but it's a lovely beer and you woke up and gone god didn't i have a good night last night <laughs> not all i've ever done that but that's nasty so that was the kind of the pretty much the first half of the beers that i drank on draft at gbbf as I said, get over to Beer Goggles Reviews, see the other beers that I reviewed uh, in collaboration with Terry Kay. At the end of the day, end of a long day of drinking, a long day of drinking and talking and walking, um, I had to go and pick up my suitcase that I packed full with 10 bottles of beer that I bought, brought back from GBBF. Some of them here, some of them I've got on the floor. So let's get into it and I'll show you what I picked up. So, two here. This, uh, for the Eagle Eye, this is actually empty, I had this last night, it's a bottle of Firestone Walker's DBA there. A lot of people say it's their tribute to something like Fuller's ESB, um, but they say double barrel ale, very much an English style pale ale. Uh, next one, which one that I haven't had for ages, until actually the week of GBBF where I had quite a bit of it, at the uh, American Brewers Association event in Bodines in Soho. It's Dogfish Heads India Brown Ale, I, I love that beer, lovely hoppy. Brown Ale. Uh, next up, Founders Double Trouble. You're not going to see a review of that because I reviewed it in one of maybe like the, the sixth video that I ever reviewed a beer was Founders Double Trouble. That's just, that's just for me to enjoy on my own. So yeah, Founders are in the UK now, but that, I don't know if that has appeared as yet, so hopefully that's their current seasonal. I'll have to check the date, date on that, it might be nice and fresh. Next one, one what I've never had even when we had Dogfish Head distributed in the UK a number of years back, maybe about four years ago. That's the Midas Touch, which was one of the earlier uh, kind of historical ales that they did. So that's a, one of their ancient ales. So it's uh, brewed with barley, honey, white muscat grapes and saffron. So no, no hops actually in that beer. The ones at the top, they're the big boys. Uh, some beers that I was surprised to see and very excited to see. This one I remember... Um, Stuart from uh, Ginger Ale Ale Trail, I mean that's, that's Boulevard's Dark Truth Stout. I always thought that was great and Boulevard do some incredible beer. Their tank seven it. Um, Saison is an absolute stunner. This is probably the best bit I had at the uh, American Brewers Association's um, event in uh, Bodines in Soho. That's Ballast Points, Victory at Sea, Imperial Porter, that was an absolute stunner. Probably my beer of the night at that event. Another from Dolphish Head. As I said, we don't get much of these, and I've always wanted to try this. Bottle of their Sati, which is a ale brewed with black chai tea and juniper berries. So a bit different, but I mean, I can't just drink Imperial Stout and IPA all the time. We just get bored and stop watching me. It's talking a bit, a bit of both, really. Just, I was saying Imperial Stout and... IPA, Firestone Walker, I'd say the best brewery in the world. There, Wookie Jack, Black IPA, Black Rye IPA. Looking forward to that. I've had that on draft once at Brewdog, I think it's past its best, but still very nice indeed. I mean, Firestone Walker can do no wrong in my eyes. And then the big ones, I should have got the other one as well. They had the, just the regular Eclipse, uh, which is kind of the base beer for these two. Beasties. I remember see, I've seen so many people on, on um, American uh, beer tube channels uh, like Jameson and Ryan and people like that um, getting really excited about these two in particular. It's 50 um, 50s 
Eclipse. I don't know what the relevance of, re relevance of the number, it's like number two on that one, number one on that one, so I don't know if that's a BR1, is that barrel one and barrel two, I don't know. Exciting stuff, regardless. And it is the, um, it says uh, Eclipse, which is an Imperial Stout aged in oak barrels at the bottom, it says Stout brewed with honey. And these two are the Elijah Craig, which I think is bourbon, I think. I'm not a big whiskey drinker or anything, so I don't know these things. Wax dipped. If you see a wax dip ball, I'm going to buy them. It's going to be good beer, isn't it? That's the rule. Craft beer with a wax tip. It's going to be ace. <laughs> so that is the 12-year-old Elijah Craig barrel. And that is the 20-year-old Elijah Craig barrel. Never had anything from this brewery. Two real humdingers as well. Beers I wasn't expected to be available at GBBF. That one being the big bad boy of them all. All in all, it was a good time down GBBF. Very tiring. Um, some great beer, some fantastic conversation as well. Mate. So, and that's one of the best points of uh, attending the festival is just meeting up with old friends, meeting new friends. They had some really good times, as, as you'll see. Uh, me and Terry had a really good laugh. Hung out with the guys from uh, Three Friends, Three Friends Brewing, Christian, Chris and Steve. Lovely, lovely guys. I uh, had a lovely time with uh, Maverick Cole, what a, what a lovely person. And I, I, met, I met Melissa Cole as well, I've been meaning to um, touch base with her about her upcoming project, shall we say. So, yeah, some, just some great times. Talk to the guys from, um, from Salopian as well, Offbeat, uh, Humpty Dumpty, loads of people. Great time. It's a lot of fun as GBBF. I fully... Uh, encourage you to visit. It is the, as they say, it's the granddaddy of them all. There's loads of these little boutique festivals coming, uh, appearing out of nowhere, and they are incredible. That's more the kind of beer that I um, like to drink. I will criticise GBBF every year, but it's a lovely gathering. And it's a real kind of a place where like-minded people can share their um, share their passion. So, I'm, I hope you enjoyed my shaky handheld footage and seeing the bottles I picked up and I'll see you well in the next beer review so see you next time cheers <laughs>